Continue working on your scene from the last movie. If you need to, you can also use the scene named cp14extras.max. This last movie suggests a few additional components you can add to the scene without detailing the step-by-step -step instructions. Feel free to come up with your own ideas as well. It would be nice to animate a boat of some sort traveling down the waterway. I'm not providing any for this tutorial, but you can find a few with a little web browsing. The Google 3D Warehouse is always a good place to start. Google the three words and select the appropriate link, which is called the Trimble 3D Warehouse at the time this movie was made. Enter a search word such as boats. You can fine-tune the search further, entering additional keywords such as boat tanker. Granted, tankers are a tad too big for this particular waterway, but they look cool. Choose one you like. I personally like the Elena Cement Cargo Ship by Mattia Marullo. Download the .skp file to your system and import it into your scene. In fact, you may want to import it into a blank scene first and edit it. You would probably want to attach all objects into a single mesh. You may also want to rework some materials and maps. You'd almost certainly need to adjust the pivot point. After that, you can save it as a max file and merge it and animate it in your bridge scene. Another component you may consider adding is animating pedestrians using the Populate tool. Populate always fits nicely in architectural and urban surroundings, as it adds a human touch to the mix. Populate has been previously covered in numerous tutorials on this channel, so you can review those if you need pointers. Keep in mind that a Populate flow is always horizontally leveled, which may be a problem with this bridge which is sloped. This means you may need to work with flow ramps. So when you create a flow on a sidewalk, the first point you click is automatically in auto grid mode, but the next point is at the same Z level as the first. This may look fine in the top view, but try looking at it in a 3D view and you'll see the problem. The starting point looks okay, but the ending point is too high. In this case, you'd need to edit the flow by selecting the midline and adding a ramp to it. Now the flow is divided in three parts. You can get the mid cross sections closer to the ends and make vertical adjustments to create a long mid ramp section. Once that's done, you can go back to using regular populate workflows to add animated pedestrians to your scene. Finally, once you are satisfied with your finished scene, you can render any or all camera shots you have created. You can render stills or full sequences. A sample movie with multiple camera shots has been provided. In this tutorial, you learned a great many things. You started from a blank page with the assumption that you are a civil engineer contracted to build a bridge across Lake Champlain. You learned to analyze the area using Google Earth and to extract information such as GIS data and aerial maps. You then learn to use Civil 3D to build a bridge based on criteria you have established. With that done, 
You learn to import the Civil 3D design into 3ds Max design by ways of the Civil View plugin. Using Civil View, you are able to easily add components such as road marks, lamp posts, signs, and animated vehicles. You also learn to add guardrails and other swept objects that otherwise would be complicated to build manually. You also learn how to add custom objects to the Civil View library, in this case in the form of pillars for the bridge structure. You then added buildings and vegetation using a combination of Civil View library and some 3ds Max scattering techniques. Finally, you added animated cameras to provide you with various views of your bridge design. You can set your civil engineer's hat down for now and take a deserved break until your next project. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll be back again with you very soon. This is Amir Yassin from Autodesk, signing off.